Hello. Hey everybody. I have been trying to get something to post today on several different occasions, but it's been an exciting day and I've had lots of phenomenal stuff and I've had different things that I've been working on and talking about and um, I wanted to get this out there because it really just struck home with me. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about different stuff and you know, I've been telling people that I've been journaling and it's a conversation with your greater self and all that stuff and reinventing myself. Well, as you can see from some of my stuff, I've got books full of quotes and questions and I mean, I've been doing a lot. That's one. I got another one here that I've been doing and I got another one here that I'm doing. So, I mean, I'm like journaling like crazy and... I've had a couple people message me and say, I like the idea of journaling. What are you doing? Just writing down what you do during the day? And I used to journal that way. And it, it was somewhat effective, but I ended up, oh gosh, back in September, a really good friend of mine, Christy Ward, put out a, a, um, a thing on journaling and it just totally changed the way I looked at journaling. She's the one that said, you know, it's basically having a conversation with your higher self. And um, one of the things that I was looking at is, you know, I've had some, <laughs> I've got a great life, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I clock in when I want, you know, I do what I want when I want. My family, I hang out with my kids. Um, I have a great life. And Abby and I have been talking a lot lately as we've spent a bunch of time healing, um, working on ourselves, you know. People, you know, a lot of times look at the professional side with the Dr. Michael explains and the YouTubes and the channels and the businesses and whatnot. And while we do go on vacations and things, you know, there's the illusion that, no, oh, their life is perfect. We have five kids. Uh, most of my days involve three or four hours a day of carting kids around and it starts at about seven o'clock in the morning. And some people are like, well, that doesn't sound very exciting. I actually love it. Um, I was very resistant to it for a while and a, and a perspective shift when our oldest, Jackie, whom I love dearly, went to college, I realized that I was missing out on things. And so I started to take my kids to school so that I had a few minutes with them alone and I'd take them to practice and it gives us time to kind of catch up and chat. And I didn't know whether it was going to be really effective or not, but I enjoyed it. And then it got to the point where they were like, hey, no, I want you to pick me up. I want to, hey, can we keep talking? And it was really nice. And when I started the journaling, I was always writing, you know, like, you know, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. And you, know, you go through the journaling and you're working on your gratitude. And what are you going to talk about? And you have all this chatter going on. And, um, you know, I've said before that uh, one of my mentors said a while back that, you know, you're not reaching your potential and there are people out there waiting for you to kind of lead them in what to do because they want to hear what you have to say. And I'm like, I'm not really all that cool. I just kind of do my stuff. And the reality is, is I'm currently, even though my life is amazing and my life is great and, you know, I am so grateful for my life. And then I'm like, I want so much more. And, you know, it's... It's a level of ambition and it's a fine line between grateful for what you have and goal setting because you want more. And it's not about wanting more and not being happy with what you've got. It's about reaching your potential. And so I've been spending a lot of time lately working on reinventing myself. Um, I have a lot of great friends and mentors in lots of different businesses. I've got people in, you know, obviously in a magic with the water and stuff like that and gas and um, Freedom Collective, but I mean, I've got people in other organizations, whether it's World Ventures, all the other companies that we have clients with and doing stuff. And, you know, we all have one thing in common and we tend to goal set, we tend to journal and we're all kind of floundering around like, well, we're trying to figure it out. You know, you read the books and you're like, do the magic and write this. And like, I wrote that and then do this. And you're like, wow, this takes a lot of time. And then it takes less and less time. But as I was working on reinventing myself, I came across Christy's um, journaling thing. And free props, Christy, you're amazing. If you end up watching this, if not, that's okay. 
Um, but she said it had to deal with pulling yourself out of scarcity. And, you know, scarcity is anything less than your potential. If you're, if you're satisfied with where you're at, that's fine. But if you're capable of more and you can help more people, there's a scarcity mindset that won't get there. And so I thought that was an interesting way to pick. And so I started to ask myself some questions. And I really wasn't getting anywhere. And she said, well, you've got to ask yourself um, better questions. If you, want to have a, if you want to be better, you've got to ask yourself better questions. You need to ask yourself questions like a coach would ask you. Um, for instance, like, what are your mindsets around money? And I'm like, well, they're pretty good. But are they great? Could they be better? Yes, they could. What do you do right? What do you do wrong? What could you do better? Um, in various situations, she'll make the statement is, how would a millionaire approach this? And, you know, I'm fortunate in the fact that I can ask them and I observe some. And the things that they don't waste time on, I find myself wasting time on. And I'm like, wow, I really don't need to think about that. We spend so much time making decisions that aren't in alignment with what we think we want. But most of us haven't asked each other ourselves the question of what do we want? Um... You know, me, I, I'm in the online industry and it looks like everybody's like, hey, it's just going to the beach, it's going to the lake, it's going to Australia. And we do do that absolutely to a degree. But the other part of that is we have five kids and we're tied to school systems and stuff. And so I started to think, well, what would be a better version of myself? And I'm like, I would really like to travel the world with my kids um, instead of them just writing about the Great Pyramids, like, let's go on vacation to the Great Pyramids or to the Great Wall of China. Or I really, when we went to Australia in the summer, I am not going to lie. Gold Coast was amazing. Actually, I stayed with Christy and Clint. And um, that's the first place I've ever been where I actually thought, I could almost send for the kids. And then I didn't, but I didn't really realize why I didn't, because I could have. And, and it was very, very interesting what holds you back. And most of it's stuff you set up. Um, when I was younger or when I was opening new businesses and helping fund other businesses and friends, and I've, I've been a silent partner in a lot of things, I got away from what do I really, really, really want? Do I have to work hard or should it come easy to me? Love that. Experience learning and not just talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it'd be really cool for some of the projects to actually be there. Um, <laughs> you know, Ab asked me one of my goals this year. And I freely admitted I'm a Game of Thrones fan. GOT was big for me. Hated the ending. But anyways, they've got like this whole tour you can do in like, Scotland and Ireland and all that stuff. And it's really amazing. I like that'd be fun. And, you know, why don't I? Why don't I take the kids? Why don't I schedule it? Why don't I make it? Well, you know, that's like a big commitment. No, it's just not written down and you don't go towards that. Um, you know, when you've never made six figures before, you know, your goal is to make six figures. And then once you make six figures, you're like, well, well, then I'll aim for seven. And then once you make seven, you're like, how do I keep making seven? And... One of the things that I found for me, reaching my goals crushed my success because I didn't push myself further. I didn't try to grow past where I was at. And that's not saying that, you know, never be coolest dad ever taken. Yeah, I know, right? I want a picture of everybody in the throne. That'd be hilarious. Get them all dressed up. I'm still Jon Snow. I don't care. And, um, but... You know, my big goal was, you know, when we were in traditional practice before we got into the seminars and training and working all over the world and doing webinars and trainings and all that stuff, it was very nine to five in the office tied to it and the insurance game kept changing and it was an argument and it was fighting for things and I just kind of like backed away from it. And when I let that go because our online stuff had picked up and changed everything, I was like, wow, I'm kind of there. I mean, I work a couple hours a day and my life doesn't change. And one of my mentors said, well, you know, someone like you should be making as much money in a month as you make any, you've made in a year. And I thought, dude, I made a lot of money. And they go, yeah, 
that's not it. It your money for that year was the number of people that you helped. You have the wrong perspective on money. I don't I think I've got a pretty good perspective. And I was wrong. And it is now probably 18 months to two years later when I finally figured it out. And I was reading that book, Happy Pocket Full of Money. And it was like people associate wealth with money. Money and wealth are completely independent of each other. You can have a wealth mindset and not have a lot of money in the bank. Money is just riches. But wealth and riches are two totally different things. Wealth is, I've got a, I've got a ton of wealth. My children are amazing. My family is amazing. I have a beautiful home and on property. I mean, that's, that's wealth. That doesn't necessarily mean that I've got millions and millions and millions of dollars sitting in the bank account. No, I've got an online income that's really nice. But money is a means of exchange. It's an energy. It's a frequency. If you want to have more money, you have to give more service or help people more. And I was like, I never really thought about it that way. I have always just, and it and it's legal tender for service. And I, and you know, a lot of people they get a job and there's nothing wrong with that. And they go nine to five and they get their paycheck and then they live within that paycheck, not realizing that they can do more, help more. And you know, your current level of income is directly tied to the number of people you're helping and influencing via, you know, sometimes it's investors helping other people live their dreams. Sometimes it's rend chiropractors are rendering service. Coaches are helping people. They're helping little leagues. Um, firemen, they're, they're, you're, you're exchanging time for money, which is fine. But if you're helping more money, you have, if you're helping more people, you'll have more money. And I don't mean that in a materialistic way, but it, it's taking myself out of scarcity in the fact that, you know, you look at like, I'll look at my friends in the military and go, dude, these guys are sacrificing their lives and they're making peanuts compared to the guy who's running a football on a field. That seems out of proportion and yet when you look at it as money as a means of exchange because of something that guy on the field may only have 10 minutes five minutes but in that five minutes he inspires people come off couches they're yelling they're chanting just an enormous amount of impact and influence with millions of people Whereas somebody who is not, their service, in my opinion, is way more valuable than the football player. But the level of influence and the exchanges, they've affected more people. And I thought, wow. And so Abby and I were making our goals. And like I said, I wanted to go to, one of them was to go to Scotland for the Game of Thrones and the Ireland thing. But like, how do we do more? How do we get more? How do we make more? And... You know, my friend said, well, you just have to become a greater level of influence. I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right. I've got some notes. I'm not seeing comments. Okay, I'm going to roll with it anyways. And so I, I started to think, what, what's a millionaire mindset? How do I attract more money with ease and flow? How do I get things to flow on autopilot? You know, what would it be like to just automatically deposit five or $10,000 a day in your bank account? because you're creating influence. And so I started to look for mentors that were doing that and I found a lot of them. There's a lot of people doing it and you're looking on social media and you're seeing these people that are, you know, I got a million followers and they're making money and you know, it's just insane and you're like, what do they influence? It doesn't matter. There's always somebody that wants to hear what you have to say and I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like reaching out for kind of the, I don't want to say stay at home dad, but you know, you're, you want to do more, you want to help more. I have a real heart and a passion for single moms and disabled vets. Um, my dad died as a disabled vet when I was young and left my mom with three kids and no college education. So I've really started to focus in on helping single moms and creating a system online. My mom worked a couple jobs to make ends meet and you know, if I had somebody that was like me that could teach my mom how to do what I do, 
my life growing up would have been totally different. Um, and I'm not complaining. My mom is amazing. I love her to death. Uh, she said, she literally taught me I can have anything if I want, if I want to work for it and don't take no for an answer. And if you want to do it, go do it. And so I really did take that to heart. But then as I saw, you know, the way that the world is changing and stuff, you know, we need a better way. And anybody that's followed my page says, you know, different things happen to you and different stories. And I've been looking at like, how did my success arrive? And these are conversations that I've been having with myself. And you know, I'm like everybody else. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and your brain's going a million miles a minute on all these other things. And one of the things that I found was when I started to do this quality journaling and really ask myself better questions, the, the chatter stopped and it became what was relevant. And as I started to focus in on helping to create a system to help others and encourage others, I don't care what your business is. I don't care what you're in. I don't care how you work. If you want to improve yourself and help others, please just work on it. It's about personal growth. If that's something that resonates with you, cool. Share this with some friends. But um, if you're struggling with something, it was kind of funny. Um, do you ever remember like on The Simpsons where he's like, I will not talk in class, I will not talk in class, I will not talk in class, I will not talk in class. Drove me crazy. But how many times do we need to reprogram our brain to I will not talk bad about myself, I will not criticize myself. I, I mean, we spend, oh, I could be in better shape, oh, I could do this better, oh, I could do that. I can do 99 things right, and I'm really going to focus in on correcting the one thing that I did wrong. Um, and that's ridiculous. Um, perfection is, it's not real. It changes from day to day. And so I started to rework my mindset on what money is and how I relate to it. Um, how do I help more people? Um, it's a way of keeping score. It's not really about wealth. It's, that's just about a bank account. Wealth is investing in people. Riches is about, you know, money. Money's a tool. And if you use it correctly, it grows. Um, figure out what you want. You know, if you, if you are, you know, Jackie, my daughter has got her first real job for the summer and it's, she's loving it. She's doing numbers. She's looking at econ uh, international economics and just loves it. And I said, well, figure out where you want to go with it. What do you want to do with it? You know, always try to rise to the next level and give yourself 90 days to say, hey, this is the person I want to be. You know, when we're all kids and we're all in high school, it's like we have all these dreams and we have all the answers. If you have any questions to life that you don't understand, I have a 15 year old that's actually napping in the next room. He's got it all figured out. Just send them to me. I'll make sure he can answer them because he obviously knows everything. Um, but no, seriously, when you're in that mode, you know what you want. You're like, yeah, I'm going to be this. and I'm going to have all the cars and the houses and the this and that. And I'm going to be this great. And it's um, then all of a sudden we're like, wow, I don't have any food in the cabinet. I guess I better get a job. Okay, they'll pay me this much. So what part of my life can I live in within this amount of money? And believe me, a job is a great thing. I am not telling anybody to quit your job. But figure out a way that you can live the dreams. Oh, you want to travel the world? Go ahead, travel the world. There's people that do it for free. There's people that do it on coupons. There's people that do it on your jets. And you know the difference is basically they just figured out what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. And in doing that, you know, you have to start with a level of gratitude. Um, that sounds cheesy because everybody is talking about gratitude today. And I haven't really seen anybody do the attitude of gratitude and thankful and all that stuff. And I'm going to touch on this because 18 months ago, Abby and I really started on this journey on gratitude. And me... This right here, I don't have many vices, but I love a magnificent cup of coffee. And if you ask me if I'm thankful for coffee, I am thankful for coffee. God made coffee just for me, but that's not gratitude. If you wanna have gratitude and really know what it feels like to have a cup of coffee, hey dude, you headed to work? No, I'm just getting up. 
Okay. Not a leak in my car. And, um, but in that cup of coffee, you want to be grateful for it? I'm so thankful for it. Yeah, it smells good, tastes good, and it gives me a little bit of a, woo, greatness. But if you want to be grateful for it, think about all the people in South America, the family business, they got their kids working in that heat. No thanks, I like AC. Growing the beans. Um, you know, it's interesting that coffee is actually grown in a lot of places where there's um, cocaine fields. I did not know that until recently. And so there's a high level of risk with that. Well, if my family is living there to grow beans for coffee, I'm like, wow, I'm glad my kids aren't living like that and working like that. And then the harvesting and the people that it takes to harvest it. And then they have to pack it off and they take it to a plant where it's cleaned up and it's processed and it's repackaged and it's shipped to another place where it's dried and then it's shipped to another place where it's processed. And then it gets to the border and then we have the border patrol that's like, You've got Homeland Security, you've got all the FDA stuff, you've got all the people checking all the information. And so that's just like growing the beans. That's like nothing else. Well, now you get it into the U.S. and it's processed and it's like, oh, I want decaf, I want caffeinated, I want mocha, I want hazelnut, I want java, I want... If you look at the coffee aisles, there's a bajillion of them. Every one of those is a processing thing. Every one of those employs hundreds if not thousands of people. So now they get it in there, they've got the people that process it. Well, then they put it in the bags. Well, do you want it ground? Because there's people running the grinders and then there's people that are doing the, the bean as a whole. And then they've got people doing the bags to get you there. And then the bags are shipped out to a wholesaler who ships it out to the grocery store. The grocery store gets it from their distributor who puts it on the shelves and then it gets to the back off. Now you've got all the truckers that have done this. And then you get to the stock boy and he's putting it on the shelf at three o'clock in the morning so people that come in can get their coffee. And now you have a bag of coffee. And we complain because it's like, ooh, I hope that goes on sale soon because it's like $8 a pound. I walked into, I went into Kroger and I was like, nineteen eighty for a pound of coffee? Look at it, it's there. It's this Hawaiian stuff. I was like, I'll buy it. And um, it just gets interesting. And then you've got the coffee, then you buy it, then you get the checkout and you get all the people that divide and all the, they built the Kroger, they built the, the electrical, they got the things, they got this, they got that. And then I have coffee at home. Now, do I have a kettle? Who mined the metal? Who did the pot? Who processed it? I have my gorgeous cup. Who mined the clay? Who did the pottery? Who painted it? Who delivered it? Who got it? I have water. Well, now you've got water treatment. I've got processing. I've got all the stuff that they do to get it. I have the people that plumb it. I've got, I've got 4,000 people, jobs, going, I'm thankful for this. That's thankful. Gratitude is being grateful that you didn't have to do all those steps to have a cup of coffee. And so when I really started to look at it like that and all the things in my home, I started to appreciate what people were doing for me more and more. And I thought that's really made me more grateful. And as I became more grateful, the stuff that was stressing me out and what I wasn't getting done was working way better. And so I started to go, okay, so that's a good place to start is start with gratitude. But that's why you start with gratitude because we in America and most industrialized countries, because you're watching it on the internet, you know, we have a disposable consumer's mindset. Oh, that cup of coffee was gross. Throw it out and give me a better one. I've done it. Ooh, it's old and get rid of it. And so it's, it's unreal what we're doing. So you know, start with a gratitude and then just pick a topic. Um, there's a sweet lady, her name is Debbie Muse, and she gave me a whole freaking list of things. So just pick a topic and ask yourself, what does it mean to you? Um, in this journal here, I mean, I, I did it here and it was like, what does it mean to step into the unknown? Leap of faith. I talked about it, it's somewhere in here. Um, there's another one, what does it mean to surrender? What is your why? What does it mean to be free? It's interesting. Freedom is paid for in blood. Um, it's not free. Um, what does it mean for you to show up every day? So you can have a list of topics that you write about. And then you start asking yourself better questions. If you want to make, if you want to have more impact with people. Um, I just said I wanted to have more influence with people. Okay, what do I need to do to become a person that has more influence? 
I need to be talking to myself better. I need to be ta having better conversations with my kids. I now have my kids' friends. I've got texts on my phone right here of my kids' friends going, hey, Mr. Michael, I need to talk to you about some stuff. Can I talk to you? And I'm like, where did that come from? Because my son was talking about the conversations that we had had. Um, use journaling to get rid of your mental blocks. Oh, I could never do a go live. Sure you can. It's like pushing any other button on Facebook. You just hit go live. Start talking. Um, sweet, sweet lady that I've recently gotten to know. And her name is Felipe and she uh, is out of New Zealand, I think. Oh, there she is. Ha! Cool. Hey, I'm here. I'm doing it. I know I'm taking action. Um, but she made a statement. It's not about what you think people want to hear. It's about what you want to say. So when you say it, the people that need to hear it will show up. And my wife is the most fucking amazing person I know. I am so lucky. Yeah, Dr. Epps, she's gorgeous. She's on modeling. She's got kids. She's a doctor. She's a chef. She's a pianist. She's an artist. It's like, she's amazing. Um, she has life experiences that she can pour into women that most women can't even imagine. She's just that phenomenal. But she grew up not really being allowed to speak, not even being able to talk. And told that her opponent, you know, keep your mouth shut, be quiet. And so she still does. And Felipe made the statement and I told it to Ab and she went and watched the whole thing. And it's like, it's not about what you think people want to hear from you and being perfect. It's about what's inside and letting people know your own struggles. And I was like, that's brilliant. So I just kind of wanted to put it out there, talk for a few minutes about getting in touch with who you are and where you want to go. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? If your life is perfect, by all means, ignore me. Um, my life's pretty perfect, and I just want to help more people and be more influential. And part of that is having better conversation with myself. And so a couple thoughts. One, ask yourself better questions when you journal. Two, who do I need to become for more influence, to make more money, to have a better job, to be a better communicator, to be a better husband, to be a better father? What do I need to do? You got to realize that you're using journaling to get rid of your mental blocks because you're having a conversation with yourself. If you're having the same thoughts and conversations every single day in your mind and it just turns out, write it down, answer the question, take action. It's really that simple. And, you know, if you are the type of person that is thinking about that, it's not about becoming something you're not. Christy said, it's about unleashing a part of you that's already there. Become confident enough to share. The sharing will make you successful. The success will make you a leader. You don't go, I just want to be a leader. I don't really want to be a leader. If people want to follow, great. This is where I'm headed. You know, I want an online business with a big family. I don't, you know, it's easy to look at all the millennials. They're like, yeah, I just packed my bag and went. Dude, I can't go to the ballpark without getting... You know, the stroller, the crib, the seat, diaper bag. And then making sure I've got diapers, food, thing. Make sure the stroller's ready. Is there air in the stroller? And, oh, where's her blanket? Where's her binky? Where's her stuffed animal? Does she have a blanket? Do we have sunscreen? You know, like, and that's for one child. And so, you know, do whatever it takes. We need an entourage. It's good. We bought a big vehicle. It needs to be bigger. That's another cool story. Um, so really then it becomes, what part of myself do I need to activate to make myself better and move in the direction that I want to go. And the biggest thing that I found was, what are my triggers? There's certain things that if I do them, I'm like, okay, I'm pulling out. I just need to chill. Um, sweet lady, another sweet lady met Dr. Katie Henry. She said, hey, um, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it's an immediate flow activation. And I called it, hey, look, I can get my head out of my ass in less than 30 seconds. And, uh, you know, she gave us little activations. If you want some information, let me know. I'll be glad to let you know. There's little triggers that you can do to put yourself in a great mood, and there's certain things you can do to make yourself in a pissy mood. Um, it's really a choice, and you have to look at it and go, yeah, I'm in a pissy mood, and I really don't give a shit. It's a choice not to change it. You know, you know emotions aren't real, but they're the most important thing. You can change your emotions with chocolate. You can change my mood with pizza. But that's another whole story. 
give yourself permission to be real. Give yourself permission to be who you think you want to be. And if it takes a week, a month, a year, 10 years, great. Um, I was in, I hate to say somewhat lucky instant success in the online industry and network marketing and secondary businesses. And I was, and it was the worst thing that happened to me because I was like, here I am. Where did it go? And then I had to learn to be, I could sell, I could talk, I could teach, but to lead and build a team, that's something totally different. And I really do want to help people better their lives. And for me, it starts with journaling. You can see I got all these threads. Yes, don't mock me. They're color coded. It's hilarious. My daughter came home from college. just like, holy shit, dad, my notebooks look the same way. I'm like, really? Never showed her. It must have been genetic. But if you want to be more, be more. And it doesn't mean you have to be the next Oprah Winfrey with, you know, billions of viewers or the next thing. I didn't want to be a better person for my kids, a better husband, better team leader, better chiropractor, better friend. Um, I'm a real serious introvert. Um, it's kind of funny. Everybody thinks I got great people skills. I do. And um, so I'm going to run. It's time to get going. I've got kids to get to practices and whatnot. So anyhow, I hope this helps somebody. If it doesn't, that's okay. It helped me. I spoke. There you go. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these. I hope uh, all, you all have the best. Good luck. Get a good journal. I actually made my own journal cover because I have issues. And um, get yourself some notebooks. It doesn't have to be the $30 one. Do yourself a favor. Take that $30. Bucks, go to Walmart. Buy these little plain sketch pads. They're 5 bucks. You can buy six of them. And write the shit out of them. Ask yourself the hard questions and become the person you know you who you're supposed to be and where you want to be. Have a great one.